Hey everyone, welcome back to NDC. Today we're going to be exploring one of the biggest blockers for any new iOS devs using Xcode, getting your app to run on your real device like your iPhone or your iPad. So if your device isn't showing up in Xcode or you're getting a failed to install error or developer mode keeps on confusing you, we're going to be walking through this setup step by step, super quick. By the end, you'll have your physical device paired to Xcode, trusted in developer mode and running your app flawlessly. But let's go ahead and dive on in. First, we need that real device. So I have my iPad here and your Mac to trust each other. You are going to need to connect them. So from my iPad, I have my USB-C plugged in one end of the iPad and the other end in the Mac. And you'll see on the screen share of the iPad here that it's asking us to trust this computer. So do you want to trust whatever your name of your MacBook is? And because we are going to be running the applications on here, we'll of course want to press the trust button. You'll just need to enter your device passcode. And there you go. You can even see under the developer tab, which I'll show you where that is in just a moment, you can always clear those trusted computers. So when we go into Xcode, you should now actually be able to, since it's been trusted, connect your iPad or iPhone. So from the list of simulators here, we can now see iOS devices, my iPad. So you can actually see there's this like little globe next to my iPhone, which currently isn't plugged in. You can actually over the network, connect and run. However, I usually recommend the cable as it's a little bit faster. So we can now select the iPad. Starting in iOS 16, Apple added a security layer that prevents apps from installing unless developer mode is turned on. So if you ever see the message like unable to install the app or your device isn't set up for development, that's why. So on your physical device, you'll need to go to the settings. From here, you're going to want to go to privacy and security. There we go, got the little hand here. And you're going to want to scroll, scroll, scroll until you find developer mode. It should be under the security tab here. Now I've already turned mine on. When you do turn developer mode on, you may need to just quickly restart your device. This is required, don't skip restarting it. Once you've restarted, come back to this menu and ensure that that toggle is on. You can also double check by scrolling all the way to the bottom in your settings tab on the left here, and you'll see this little developer hammer. Okay, now that that's all been set up, the last thing you'll need to ensure is in your app here, we can actually click on the app file in the top left of our project navigator. In the signings and capabilities, just to prevent any bugs, is actually enable automatic signing. Let's go ahead and enable that. For your team, you may have also set up your team when creating your application, you'll want to select your Apple ID account. If you don't have an account or if you need to add one, you can press the add account button. You'll see the pop up here and you can actually add that Apple account. This should open up and you can sign in with your email or phone number. It is totally free. So I'm just going to select my team on my account. Again, totally feel free to use a free one. Okay, and we should be able to run on our iPad now, build succeeded. I'm just going to tab back on over to the iPad. If you have an app open, it's just going to kind of forcibly open the other application here. So this is just going to be a like quick little login screen from the cursor video. And it's actually pretty cool. If you do have any print statements or any kind of uh, things that are happening in the logs, you can actually see all of those changes here. So as I'm testing in real time, We'll just, you know, quickly add a fake email. Go ahead and fake sign on in. We even have any of our errors or any logs that may appear here, but we can actually test the app in real time on our device. Now, if this is your first time building without a paid Apple developer account, you may see something like your developer certificate needs approval. You may just need to go back to your settings. You'll want to go to the general tab here. And there should be a VPN and device management, just might need to scroll for a bit. And from here, you can actually sign in or trust any certificates that you may need to. And I will just quickly show you, so I, I am wired right now, <laughs> hope it shows on the camera. Um, if I go ahead and disconnect and stop running our app, I am now wireless. <laughs> we'll be able to see that we can connect over the network, which is pretty cool. So just to summarize the steps that we took, we needed to plug the device into our Mac so they can talk to each other. We needed the device to trust the computer. We then needed to enable developer mode and restart a device. Then in Xcode, we selected the device and we ran. 
Once you've done those, you're completely set for life. Any future device setup will feel super effortless. So if you also need to pair your iPhone, etc., etc., you should be all good to go there. And again, just make sure you're signed in on Xcode. And then if you do have to trust the profile, especially for any free accounts, you just need to do that on your iPad as well. So they're able to run. If you are using a free developer account, you get up to three installed apps at a time. And I don't think there's a limit for the paid one. If there is, I haven't hit it yet. <laughs> so that is all dream big code bigger. And hopefully that helped you set up your device for testing in Xcode.